Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video series, we're going to learn how to record and produce your band in Reaper. Now, the way I'm approaching this series is that you don't have to know anything about using Reaper. You could have just downloaded it from their website and opening it for the first time. I'm not going to assume you know anything about how Reaper works. I will be teaching you every step along the way. But if you do want to dig deeper on any particular subject that we touch on, go to the Reaper website and check out under videos all the specific videos that are available. And there's a whole bunch of them, and they're all free. I also want to introduce you to the artist we're going to be recording. It's a good friend of mine's band, and his name is Bill Mayer, and his band is called 10 Gallon Fat. You can check out their music on Facebook at facebook.com slash Bill Mayer Music, or you can go directly to their website at 10gallonfat.com. You could also check out their Reverb Nation page at ReverbNation.com slash Bill Mayer. And that's spelled M-A-I-E-R. But please support them as I want to thank them for letting us use their music in this tutorial. Now the song we're going to be recording is called Anywhere. And it's kind of an Americana style song with a bit of country and a bit of rock thrown in as well. It's a bit of a slower tempo but I think that'll help us work a bit slower as we get sounds and get things set up. Make sure you've downloaded Reaper and have it working with your audio interface. Now let's get started setting up our tracks and their inputs. When you first open Reaper, it should look like this. Our tracks go over here. Our timeline is over here. Up here's our toolbar, where we could choose tools to adjust options. And down over here is our transport. If you don't see the transport, just go to the view menu and you can choose to view it here. You could hide it or show it. And in the transport, we can rewind, fast forward, stop, play, pause, go into record, or even loop. And over here, we can see where we are on the timeline. And to create new tracks, just double click over here. We get new tracks just by double clicking. We can make them bigger with page up or smaller with page down. Now, one thing I should mention is the track layout right here is set to its default. So yours should look like this. But in this video, I prefer to use a larger layout. Let's delete these. So I'm going to change it by going to options. Go down to Layouts, Track Panel, and instead of choosing the default, I'm going to choose Large. Just makes the buttons on here a bit bigger, and adds a fader instead of a knob to control volume. So make sure you switch yours too if you want yours to look the same as mine. So you can make this bigger by just dragging it up and down. Let's take a look at the buttons on each track. We have a record button, our panning, left and right, mute, solo. We can add effects to our track. And down over here, we can set our input that we're going to record. Now over here is a button for monitoring. By default, it's turned off. So if we go into record and start playing through this track, we're not going to actually hear it. We'll still be recording to it, but we're not going to monitor the actual output. If we want to change that, and we do, just hit this button once, see so it turns to this color. Now record monitoring is turned on. If we hit it again, it switches to auto mode, which we don't need right now. In this mode, it behaves like a tape machine. So if you're in record, you're going to hear the input going through it, but if you're just on playback, you won't. But for recording our basic tracks, we want to be in this mode. Record monitoring on. Now, as we create new tracks, we need to change it for each one of them, or we can change the default, which I think we should do right now. Let's delete these two. Let's go to our preferences 
Under Options, Preferences. We'll go down over here to Track Send Defaults. Over here, we could choose our default inputs, and all these settings will be applied to new tracks. So right here, we can see that Monitor Input or Tape Auto Style is turned off. Let's choose this to turn it on. And now it's checked. So now if we create a new track, monitoring is turned on by default, which will make things easier for what we're doing. So now let's create all the tracks that we're gonna need. For this song, we're gonna record a bunch of basic tracks, which is having the band play live, and then we'll add some overdubs afterwards, which is adding new parts on top of the original performance. So let's add one track for kick, another for snare, rack tom, floor tom, and one track for overheads. In Reaper, we can create stereo tracks that record two inputs to that one track, which we're gonna do for the overheads. So now let's name these tracks. Go to the first one here, double click it, and name it kick. And if we hit tab, it goes to the next track. We'll name it snare, rack tom, floor tom, and then our overheads. And that's gonna be our drum inputs. Now in my audio interface, I have 16 inputs, so I can afford to dedicate one, two, three, four, five, and six inputs for drums. If you don't have that many, like eight or even four, you might have to condense things. Maybe not use tom tracks, but I have enough to separate them. Now I'm gonna add a color to the drum tracks so we can quickly tell them apart from other tracks. So let's select them all by holding down Shift, then right click, go to Track Color, and choose Set Tracks to Custom Color. I'm gonna choose this green color right here, hit OK. Now the drum tracks are all green. Let's make this smaller so we can add some more. We have one for bass, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, and then a vocal. And that's all we're going to record on the first pass. So we'll name this bass, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, and vocal. And now we'll give these separate colors. I'll use the blue for bass. For acoustic guitar, I'll use a lighter blue like this. For electric guitar, I'll use a reddish color, and for the vocal, I'll use a goldish color, like this. Just so we can more easily see what's on each track. So now we need to set up our inputs to go to these tracks. And we can do that in our preferences. Go back to the preferences, under options. And we'll go down here under audio, and over here we can change the names of our inputs. These are the physical inputs on your audio interface. So I'm gonna to choose to name them right here, open them up, and we can see we have 16 of them. So I can name them based on what's plugged in to those inputs. I'm not gonna use input one and two, because I already have a keyboard plugged in there that we're gonna use later for an overdub. So let's remove these. So we'll plug our kick drum mic into input three, and we'll name it kick, We'll name input four snare, which is where I'm gonna plug the snare mic into, and the rack tom, floor tom, and then the overheads, which have to be labeled individually. So it'll be overhead left and overhead right. But we'll combine them to a stereo track later. Then input nine will be bass, input 10, will be acoustic guitar, 11 will be electric guitar, and then 12 will be the vocal. Now because I'm not using these inputs, I'm just gonna remove them. Make it a bit neater, hit okay, and save it. Now if we go to our tracks, over here we can set the input for each track. So we can just click on it, go to mono input, we can choose kick, for the kick track, snare for the snare track. Let's make these all bigger. For the rack tom, we'll set it to the rack tom input. And the floor tom, same thing. 
And for our overheads over here, we're going to choose a stereo input and choose overhead left and overhead right. So this is now a stereo input track. Then for the bass, mono, bass, acoustic guitar right here, electric guitar right here, and finally, our vocal. So all our inputs are set up to go to separate tracks. So now it's set up our song tempo. We'll go over here to our toolbar, to the fourth button, which is dedicated to our project settings. Choose that. Our project settings opens up where we could choose our sample rate, which is set up by default what our interface is set up to, but we could change it here if you want to. And we could also change the tempo down here. I happen to know that this song is 83 beats per minute, so I'm gonna change it right here. And I'm also gonna go into the next tab, Name Media. And I'm gonna create a separate folder for the audio files that we create. And I'm gonna name it Audio Files. And that's gonna create a separate folder just for our audio. It'll make things neater, as you'll see. And we could choose the type of files, WAV files, 24 bit. That should work for us. Hit OK. And now let's save this to its own project file. We'll go to Save Project As. I'm going to give it a name. We'll name it Anywhere, which is the name of the song. I'm going to choose the option down here to create a subdirectory for the project, which is going to create its own folder just for this song. And then if I save it, and we go to our directory to look at it, it looks like this with a folder named Anywhere. And if we open it, here's our project file named Anywhere. And here's the folder we created for audio files. Right now it's empty, but anything we record to this project is going to be put into here, keeping this folder a lot neater. So now that we're set up and ready to go, in the next video, we're going to physically plug in or our microphones or direct inputs, and we'll start monitoring and getting sounds that are usable. So let's do that in the next video. Mm -hmm.